All right, let's call to order the regular council meeting here Monday, June 5th, 2023. We are at the WC O'Neill Arena Complex uh, Chambers where people can attend a person. But in addition, we are uh, streaming through Zoom and also uh, through uh, Facebook. If anyone has any questions, anything pertaining to tonight's agenda, you can email them to pnopper at townofstandanders.ca. Mr. Nopper will make sure on the Facebook feed uh, to put uh, his email address in it. Um, so, again, the recording of attendance, Councillor Gumichel and Councillor Bennett are not here, but they did let us know that they wouldn't be attending. So, thank you to all other members of Council for being here. And I do want to recognize, again, that we are on the unceded traditional territory of the Beskotomogadi people. The agenda, I will look for a mover in a second. I do have a couple of uh, almost... Come almost for well, we'll call them amendments. Uh, but first, uh, let's get it on the table. Do I have a mover for the agenda? I've got Councillor Heenan and seconded by Councillor Harlan. Just beat you by a hair there. Um, all right, uh, discussion on it. I wanted to add uh, three changes, and I apologize for that. Uh, uh, normally, as you know, the agenda comes out on Wednesdays, and uh, myself, I, I sit down with town staff to set it. Um, but uh, we weren't able to do that this past week, so. Uh, just a couple of things under presentations. I'd like to give uh, Dominic Berlanger an opportunity to speak to 126 Reed Avenue. You can see he's in the audience. Uh, and then under communications, I wanted to add uh, just a piece uh, under uh, achievement by our clerk, uh, Paul Nopper. And then as well under recreation and community service, I, I wanted to have a quick discussion on the weekly uh, Saturday night music in Market Square. So could I have a mover for those amendments? Got Councilor Harlan seconded by Deputy Mayor Akaji. Any other amendments or any discussion? Okay. All in favor of approving the amendments, please signify by saying aye. Perfect. That has been carried. And then uh, we do have to approve the agenda now. Um, we did have a mover and a seconder, so all I need is, uh, I guess, the vote. So all in favor of the approving the agenda, please signify by saying aye. Any opposed? That's nobody. The agenda has been approved. All right. Um, before we... Uh, get into the uh i guess all the details uh just want to give an opportunity for the disclosure of conflict of interest any this evening okay so uh we will jump right into presentations then uh, as mentioned uh dominic berlanger is here in regards to 126 reed avenue if you want to uh have the mic sir uh and uh update us on that uh you will see that uh there is uh some motions coming up pertaining to that as well Good evening, uh, Your Worship and, uh, and Council members. Uh, I'm basically jumping ahead because I think uh, Xander has has the presentation uh, for uh, for the Reed Avenue project, or at least there's re there's a report uh, circulating. So uh, I basically wanted to add a couple of a couple of elements and my thoughts uh, on uh, on this project and and why we're doing this. Um, but let me start by going off topic just for two minutes uh, and say thank you. And I probably not do this on behalf of uh, myself, but all, all business owners in uh, St. Andrews, to the group of uh, first responders who helped and continue to deal directly with the fallout in the aftermath of uh, the fire of last week. For us as, uh, as immigrants, uh, this was a first time uh, being confronted with this we always hear that in in other countries and 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 then when it happens that close uh, it's it's remarkable on how communities can come together at moments like this and you know how these uh, people the heroes we call them uh, bring light into our darkest darker uh, moments thank you again for that my wife and i uh, are uh, proud being part of this community and for the past five years we have witnessed and lived the challenges of a growing small town um because in my opinion, um, that is exactly what we are. We are growing, um, a growing town filled with established and new businesses. I think if you walked Water Street for the past couple of weeks, you've seen that many businesses uh, have opened and, and, and filled up uh, empty spaces. Um, and we can be proud of that. And, and personally, I, I feel very proud. Um, workers, immigrants, students staying for a year or longer, they all look for a place to live. Maybe build a home, ready to establish a family and, and build a better community where we all can live together. We, and I'm talking about my wife and I, uh, witnessed firsthand at the Kennedy how linked the search for accommodations uh, and workers is also a challenge. Um, challenge in providing uh, for the housing, 
um, while at the same time also answering to a need for short-term rentals. We are in with our business at the Kennedy in, in, in short-term rentals, but at the same time, we have a lot of students uh, and workers, summer workers who apply, called us, uh, asked for a room, whether that is for two months, three months, uh, sometimes even for a couple of weeks. Uh, as we speak today, we have uh, somebody who is uh, joining us, staying with us for, uh, for three months. She's gonna work at the aquarium. Um, but that's three months also a choice making in not renting that room out for the night, uh, which could also, you know, uh, bring in a revenue, but at the same time, we can employ uh, this, uh, this person. So it was also a balance on, okay, are we hiring her while at the same time housing her? Because if we don't house her, she doesn't have a job here either. It's a thin line, uh, and sometimes it also involves disappointments. Uh, we had to uh, say no uh, or refuse students from the uh, NBCC for this summer, um, just simply because we lack the housing and we do need to keep rooms available uh, for our uh, hotel guests. We also witnessed uh, firsthand how difficult and challenging building a new construction can be in downtown St. Andrews, especially in the Water Street area. There's historical aspects, parking issues, height restrictions, sometimes also emotional uh, objections. Uh, and we've been confronted <laughs> with several of these uh, limitations over the past years. Some were founded, others, let's say, were less understandable. We think that the project on Reed Avenue should be able to circumvent most, if not all, these challenges. Uh, let me uh, give you six points where we believe um, that it may answer um, or at least solve a lot of things. The building will be restored and uh, we already started working on it and we're gonna respect the footprint. We're not gonna add anything to it. We're not gonna make it higher. We're not gonna uh, add any rooms to it. It's gonna be respected within the current footprint. Now, that being said, there are some other buildings um, that will probably need to be demolished. Um, one of them being the little house uh, in the front, which unfortunately is beyond salvation. Um, but that I think will we'll, uh, we'll also explain Xander is, is, is also part of the rezoning process uh, that with a multi-residential unit, we can only or not have, I think more than one. Uh, it's, it's very unclear in the current zoning bylaw what is allowed in a single family residence, what that is. So the, um, the rezoning as well as some amendments will really clarify okay. that use as a, what I'm calling a rooming house right. uh, for people who are living together, it, but sharing um, common spaces, kitchens, bathrooms, things like that. Right. But clearly, we need to demolish, unfortunately, that building. It is beyond the salvation. Um, the larger building, and that is basically um, what's at stake, um, the larger building will be respected in its current form and shape, will be restored. We started with that on the, on the exterior with the painting, and it's going to be completely remodeled. The parcel itself uh, allows for multiple on-site parking. Uh, it's large enough, leaving plenty of room and access for green space, a well-maintained law, lawn, uh, and plenty of area enjoyable for all residents uh, and visitors, while at the same time also maintaining the current, or at least the look and feel that that building had, you know, when it was still in a, let's say, very good shape. Uh, we want to bring that back. We're not going to add anything in front of the uh, of the house. We're going to keep that lawn. Uh, we're going to clear some bushes, uh, maybe a tree that is dead. But in general, we are going to respect uh, everything that was there. It is walkable. It is walkable to everything that St. Andrews has to offer. Uh, and we offer a lot, or at least this town offer, offers a lot for students, for workers alike. It is accessible. It is, it is also directly connected to... Uh, Route 127, and it is walkable to uh, the St. Andrews College. So um, for both groups, uh, this can uh, this can work. It is a large parcel, as said, um, allowing for plenty of privacy and comfort while we can increase the density. Number five, not uh, unimportant, we look for modern living. Um, 
I invite you to to come and check uh, some of our uh, um, buildings and 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 things we we've accomplished over the years. Uh, we look at a modern building with upgraded uh, kitchens, a double kitchen actually, multiple bathrooms which will be shared, uh, but also the concept of having interconnected rooms, allowing for for example families to rent two rooms interconnected and have you know a separate uh, or a secondary uh, uh, bedroom the whole building also important the whole building will be brought up to fire code uh, we're already in contact uh, with the fire marshal's office uh, they already inspected the building so we're going to work closely together uh, in making sure that whatever we get approved uh, that that is uh, also up to code and last but not least, um, we want to create a safe and monitored environment. Um, at least one of my own staff uh, will live there on site, uh, allowing for the place to be monitored. We don't want to create some kind of a party house uh, slash area where everybody is going to congregate. No, it needs to be a place where people live together, enjoy the green space, uh, and enjoy also the you know the fact of of living uh, of living together in a, in a larger uh, in a larger building so thank you very much for your uh, attention um we will follow the process um but hopefully we can create a you know an, an a multi residence or at least a, a rooming house that allows for workers not only my own there's plenty of other businesses that are looking for you know accommodations for their own staff and students uh definitely thank you Thank you. Uh, maybe if you just want to stay at the podium since you're here, we might as well see if there's any questions. Uh, does any member of council personally, my two before I saw the plan was uh, how do you control kind of any noise concerns or anything like that? You've answered that obviously with having uh, an employee live there to obviously act essentially like a don or a proctor of like you'd have like a residence. And the other question I had was parking and, and you've, you've clearly answered that. And although that building has to be demolished, it does give you opportunity to have a bigger driveway to get in. So there is benefits to that as well. Um, I think Deputy Mary had a question, did you? Yes, I yep. did. How many rooms will you have there? Well, Approximately. I think we, we look at two kitchens, five mm -hmm. bathrooms, and then eight to nine uh, rooms. And they can be, like I said, uh, we're going to try at least in one part of the building uh, to have rooms that can be connected or interconnected. Anything else, Deputy Mayor? Is that the one question? And Thank you. every every room has its has its own surface, obviously, which you know is linked to what the vet's practice or the or, or that house was. So some some of them are larger or or smaller. Uh, but in essence, on the ground floor, we're also going to try to have some type of a recreation area uh, because there's, I think there's two patios uh, currently, um, and two separate well three entrances. Mm -hmm. um, and so in between, we may um, yeah, have a recreation area where people, you know, can watch television or, you know, meet. Uh, but like I said, all within uh, the good understanding that it is a, a, a living area uh, and not a, you know, party house or, or uh, uh, you know, bar. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Heenan. Well, first off, thank you for answering all the questions. Uh, I appreciate that. And secondly, I'm not sure if anybody else notices, but every time I drive by, I'm I'm totally impressed with the uh, week's worth of work, making it look like it's brought back to life and, and showing some spectacular results. And it's really what that building needed. It was, it. you always kind of were sad when you drove by. Now it looks like it's got a little life to it. And I like the color and I thank you very much for what you've done so far. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> it is good to see the investment in the building because it was, you know, you can start to see it. And the other thing I'll note is uh, council is it's not the only one of its kind in that area because the old Algonquin Pro Shop is actually uh, a unit for housing as well. So there is another one almost directly across the street from it, as, um, just just in relation to it not being alone in a residential area. Any other questions? Uh, Councillor Hurdle. Yeah, thank you. And and there's I completely trust that you're going to run a fantastic uh, uh, unit there. But my concern, I guess, is is more long term. And this probably isn't a question for you to answer. At some point, um, the building will change hands, um, hopefully not for a very long time. Um, but are there any protections in place from a from an occupancy, fire, noise uh, perspective down the road that we should be concerned about? 
I'll, uh, since Mr. Gopin's in person, not on Zoom, I will I uh, definitely figure. speak to that. Um, and it's a great question. And I think the town already has a lot of tools uh, through your bylaws. You have a noise complaint bylaw. Um, this will we set the bedroom limit at the point we talk to our building inspectors and anything uh, over six bedrooms requires a fire marshal review um, and certain elevated standards. So that would kick in. And then there's also um, provincial occupancy standards. It's a regulation under uh, one of the acts. I'm not totally sure, but it's act it's very, very extensive. And it's not something most municipalities have to use, but it is there as a tool. And it it it's incredibly extensive. It relates, goes far beyond dangerous and unsightly properties, but then there is that as well. So I think the town has a lot of tools already. Um, and, and when you think about, you know, the types of things that can happen in, in just a regular single family residence, you know, you can have normal kind of fighting and noise. And, and I think the town's bylaws are there to deal with all that as well. Perfect. Any other member of council? All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank it you. is on the agenda later this evening, but uh, appreciate the extra information. Okay, so we do have uh, some minutes to approve. Um, so I guess uh, I'll do what I always do since there's multiple minutes. Is, is there any minutes that anyone want to flag in advance? Otherwise, I'll fly through them quickly. Okay, I'm seeing none. Let's get into them. So the first minutes to approve are the 230501 regular council meeting on Monday, May 1st, 2023 at 630 p.m. Could I have a mover for those minutes? I've got Councillor Heenan and seconded by Councillor Blanchard. Uh, all in favor of approving those minutes, please signify by saying aye. Those have been carried. The next one of the minutes of the 2305-15 public hearing of objections to bylaw 23-02, dangerous or unsightly premises on Monday, May 15, 2023 at 6.30 p.m. Once again, I'll be looking for a mover. Got uh, Councillor Harlan and Councillor Neal. Uh, all in favor of approving those minutes, please signify by saying aye. Now we're on to the minutes of the 2305-15 public hearing of objections to amendment MP20-07 to the municipal plan MP20-01 on Monday, May 15th, 2023, 6.45 p.m. Once again, looking for a mover. Got uh, Councillor Neal and uh, Councillor Heenan. All in favor of approving those minutes, signify by saying aye. So everybody in the last set of the minutes of the 2305-15 regular council meeting on Monday, May 15th, 2023 at 7 p.m. I've got Deputy Mayor Akaji and... Councillor Blanchard, I think. The, I know, that stung you. Um, all in favor of approving the last set of minutes, please signify by saying aye. And that is how you fly through some minutes. Uh, communications. Um, so uh, I think we'll just kick it off with the one that's listed first to, uh, would be the discussion on the Stein Lake Fire and Boca Beck Sham Cook. Of course, I'd like to give anyone the opportunity. I, I do have a, a few comments so uh, many of you have been following along. The Stein Lake fire was originally out of control, then it went to contained. Now it is classified as under control. Um, uh, we'll talk a little bit about DNR in a moment, uh, but uh, we all know how scary uh, of a situation that was. Uh, it's something in in my time in the community. Um, you know, there was another forest fire, but this one felt a little different. Uh, the other one was a reason to be concerned, but this one was really big. It was going in multiple directions. Um, and I know the last fire, I'm sure some people had to evacuate, but not to the levels of, of this past fire. So, um, despite how a family did lose their home, very tragic. Another family obviously lost a shed and the motorcycle. Um, despite all that, there is a sense of kind of a sigh of relief and, and some gratitude because it could have been a lot, lot worse. And, uh, we'll, we'll talk about that, that briefly for sure. But I, I just wanted to kick off and recognize, I, I think this council has done a pretty good job. I think probably making the investment in a ladder truck speaks to the respect this council has for the St. Andrews volunteer fire department. But I can't speak highly enough of, uh, of what they do for this community. And uh, you actually get a little emotional when you talk about it. Um, and uh, the dedication of our fire chief, Kevin Terrio and, and the leadership that he has of that, that fire team um, you don't get that everywhere. And uh, without their quick response, they, they called the province on the way to the, on the way to the call. That's, that's how quick they reacted. Um, you know, and I've got counselor Neil right to my side, captain Neil, when it comes to the fire department, when things were going really bad at first, uh, not only did the, the chief did an excellent job, but counselor Neil was feeding critical information to us as we were trying to make decisions. So he deserves to be recognized, but our, our volunteer fire department, you know, whether it be the, 
uh, my last term on council, the, the, the fire actually at the cottage craft, as we'd call it at the time. But um, personally, when Kingsbury Garden had it, I just every so often you get reminded at how incredibly uh, lucky we are to have them. So um, I can't just express my gratitude enough to them. And then, of course, mutual aid. Uh, it's such a, a, an important thing when you live in a small community when something goes really bad. But, um, you know, the list I have from the fire chief, St. Stephen, Oak Bay, I think they still call it the St. George Fire Department right now, but I'm sure. Um, Fundy Bay, Deer Island, uh, Eastern Charlotte, which is Black Cyber, Rolling Dam, Lawrence Station, Western Charlotte, Harvey, Musquash, Oromocto, Moores Mills. When stuff first happened, it was the local fire uh, teams that were ready and they were deployed. And they are the reason why so many houses did not burn down. They're the, probably the reason why the fire didn't jump the highway at times. Like there was so much that they did that the community is forever indebted for. And the fact that all of these municipalities and even mayors reach out to say, how can we help? Uh, it goes a long way. And then the province of New Brunswick, I know uh, like every level of government, there's times where we're like, Hey, we don't like they're doing this, but uh, the department of natural resources, um, they uh, were incredible. Um, the Not to mention obviously the planes uh, were without those planes. I think even in this weather, it'd still probably be roaring. It would have been that, uh, that uh, significant, but uh, they had over 60 people on the ground at times and uh, still in the community today, they still have a team of 15 with support. So, um, you know, the province really came through and gave us the resources we need to contain that. Um, the Red Cross um, for, you know, dispatching uh, the day that uh, we found out people were evacuated, they had a hundred cots at the WC O'Neill arena complex that night. That is spectacular. They worked 24 seven and shifts around to make sure people were coming in at three in the morning at all times of the day, they're able to register. Um, and those that's volunteer driven. Um, so big thank you to the red cross. They also have a list of, uh, of, of people that have evacuated is a private list, but we're hoping to actually access that to reach out. And we'll talk about that momentarily. Um, and then of course the residents, their patients, if you lived in sham cook Boca back and you had to leave your home, you had no idea what your property is like. And just to wait around for three days to find out, you know, how bad is it on my property? Their patience was incredible. We tried to give them as much information as we could, but the truth is when it gets to individual information, it just wasn't there. So they were so patient. And then of course, uh, to talk about our residents, the businesses in the region, not just St. Andrews, uh, there's too many people to get into specifics as we know, but the generosity that this community showed um, you know, once again, it demonstrated that we do take care of our own. Uh, we're a special place to live. Um, and when you have to actually tell people to stop dropping stuff off at the fire department, at the emergency center, I had actually a list of people that said, next thing you need to buy, next thing you need to buy, reach out to me. I want to buy it. Like there was a wait list. Like that doesn't happen everywhere. Um, the fact that you had so many people leave their home, and we had those cots. No one had to stay at them because so many people opened up their doors. Uh, everyone's seen the pictures of the list of hotels, motels, and inns that were either free or pay what you can. Um, that's that's actually, you know, to make about myself for a minute, that's exactly why I, I moved home and I want to raise my kids in this community. Um, so when times are the tough, that's when we all pull through. And even Vincent Massey Elementary School making those signs. Um, I had uh, a, a firefighter from DNR said that, I think it was about the fourth day they were getting a little tired and they were driving by and they saw those signs and it picked them up and uh, it made them feel special. And I will say the firefighters uh, had the opportunity the night before last to, to shake all of their hands and say, thank you and, and say a few words to them. But um, they did express uh, that they've never been in a community that was as kind and showed as much gratitude as this one. And that goes a long way. They multiple times there was, they don't even know where they came from. There was just, stacks of gift cards to tim hortons that they could hand around they'd be in the lineup several times at tim hortons and someone would just take care of their order for them like uh, and i think annette you were one of them because you took care of mine maybe was that you anyway <laughs> I, I i've been meaning to ask you about that but you it, sorry Councilor harlan uh but but you, you you get my point is uh despite how bad it was it also really showed how how good we are too and i also want to recognize chris and paul um, they were, they were in the thick of it. And, uh, we had an argument the first night who was going to stay overnight. And I think we all said we were good because no one would give in. Um, 
But uh, just the advice and guidance, we're really lucky to have dedicated municipal staff. So thank you to everybody. I did want to open it up to, uh, and Chris, I will pass to you momentarily to talk about support for evacuees. Uh, but I want to open up in case anyone from council, I'm probably forgetting somebody, but I, I just wanted to very quickly acknowledge the whole community, the media, um, believe it or not, CHO. But um, when you have messaging that needs to get out of there to tell people that, you know, this isn't over, that to, to be alert, all those messages, the media was such a critical element in getting the news out there. So um, is there anybody else that wanted to speak? I don't know, Councillor Neil, to put you on the spot. Is there anything you want to say just about being on the front line or anything like that? I'll put you on the spot. Um, Should have probably sure. told you before the meeting. That's all right, Your Worship. Um, no, I would just reiterate some of the things you had mentioned. Again, obviously, with the mutual aid that we have with our surrounding departments is phenomenal. Um, it's always been there. It's kind of what we do. Um, but honestly, what really stuck out with me, again, was the support from the community, from the residents, the businesses. Um, it was just phenomenal. I mean, we didn't go without anything. Like you said, there was there was more food and offerings that we knew what to do with. So um, it really was kind of heartwarming when you come back from uh, from a day in the woods and, uh, you know, had something warm to eat and and people just constantly offering their support, whether it was trailers for animals or, I mean, I had numerous people just call and ask if they could volunteer um so i mean it really was it really was special to see thank you councillor neil and it is pretty incredible i'm sure like when or Mokto came down there was times where these firefighters have never worked together but the brotherhood and sisterhood it's pretty pretty special to see the way that everybody naturally just works together and the, the way that you do it um anyone else have anything new? i've got a few uh, i'll go i'll work this way councillor heenan well, I'll keep it short. It just I just would like to say it makes me proud to be a part of such a great community and to see all of everybody putting in 100% without any effort. They just did it. And it really makes me proud. Like I even had gotten emails from people in Tracy that offered their farms. I mean, it's phenomenal. It's just it makes you proud. And as you said, Mr. Mayor, it makes you emotional, and it does. But when you went into the center here, the arena, it just makes you proud. And I, I'm just very proud to be part of this community, and I just have to say thank you to everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Councilor Harlan. <clears throat> um, I think it was really incredible, the amount of support we had from um, uh outlying fire departments and a story that was shared with me which I think was incredible was um some friends who were in Boca who whose house could have been lost was not um the fire department was vigilant when they realized the house was in danger and they really um saved their home and on the last day the fire department in St. Stephen came down to do a check and brought um, coffee infused, a bottle of coffee infused maple syrup and a note that said, I'm sorry, we trampled on your flowers. They saved their house and they were giving them, the fire department was giving them uh, a gift. It was really quite amazing. Councilor Blanchard. Uh, yeah, not much more to add to what's already been said. Um, other than to say thank you to the volunteer fire departments, and, and I totally agree, just, just to be so proud of the community and how they pulled together, it was incredible. Um, I just got back, I, I just raised this as well, I just got back from a, um, uh, a union convention in Newfoundland, there was lots of discussions about the fires in New Brunswick and Nova Scotia, uh, and the union that I represent, or I'm a part of the Union of Health and Environment Workers, actually represents a number of employees here in town at the biological station. And uh, and they want, wanted to make a donation of a thousand dollars to our volunteer fire department. So I'll just look to for some direction from council on how we can distribute that. But uh, but that was one. So I just wanted to bring that up. Thank you. Uh, just on that note, there is going to be an opportunity, um, like a community celebration, to kind of recognize our, our fire department, maybe some of the volunteers. As much as we would like to really identify these people that made donations, you're almost afraid to because you're going to leave someone out. Um, it's that many. There's some that we'll never know who donated stuff. People just dropped and went. Um, but there will be an opportunity. And and I can tell you the community celebration early on is 
indication is that will be uh, towards the local fire departments, not just St. Andrews, but all of them. Um, so there will be definitely an opportunity maybe to join on that, if that makes sense, to to, to consolidate funds. Um, Councilor Hurdle. Thank you, Worship. I, I mean, echo, absolutely echo everything that everyone has said to this point. Um, uh, incredibly proud of the community and the outpouring of support. But just wanted to note that, uh, and I know that you don't need to hear this, but uh, you did leave one person off of your list, and that was you. Um, I had uh, I had people come up to me and say, you know, you really have a good mayor there. And uh, that is absolutely true. And your dedication and leadership should absolutely be noted. So thank you very much. Thanks. But just on that note, council was constantly reaching out to me to say, what what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? So um, let's be honest. I, I ran my mouth and typed Councillor Neal's hauling hoes, right? So, <laughs> or at least telling someone to haul hoes, you're captain, right? So, <laughs> um, but thank you for that. All right. Um, so I will transition now to uh, Mr. Spear. Uh, there is a, a conversation around financial support for evacuees. Thank you, Worship. So, Council, we've had a lot of people offering to make donations, but two worthy of notice, the New Brunswick Federation of Labor had a conference last week in St. John, and from what I understand, took them an offering and offered over $8,000 to be offered to evacuees. And then recently, an email went out to chamber members that the town was or collecting funds on behalf of the evacuees to distribute them. We had a talk internally, and I think our discussion is once the funds are together, we'll probably get an application out to the evacuees or for the evacuees, I should say, and that for any expenses they incurred related to hospital stays or, or hospital stays to hotel stays, food service, things like that. Um, we may not touch the property stuff at first just because of should be insurance. We're not sure, but we'll try to get that in and out as, as as the money comes in. We'll get the application out over the next couple or three weeks and let as many people as we do know to, to come in and to, and to fill it out and supply it to us so we can process it relatively quick and, and get the hands to those that need it in, in such an unexpected time. There's a couple other things you worship. I just want to mention two or three things. Two, just as, as a thank you, if you don't mind. Oh, by all means. Uh, so I would like to say, um, following up at, about the Brotherhood of, of the Firefighters, that uh, on Sunday night, the fire marshal's office put a call to any available departments. And outside of our local region, there's 15 other departments, as far as West Bathurst, who would have sent people down to fight the fire for us. So we really appreciate it. And, I'm, and I think Councilor Neal could say, but if it was ever happened in another part of the province, I'm sure... Uh, uh, d d d some of our uh, men would hit men and women would head up there to, to help those communities. I do want to also say thank you to the other um, other CAOs and, and mayors and stuff that got lots of calls through the night and Sunday and, and Monday morning offering anything. We were just trying to couldn't think of anything, to be honest. We, we seem to have things under control, but there's even some of them that would have sent volunteers to help out the Red Cross and stuff if that got busier than we had anticipated and stuff. So thank you to all the communities and all those in Southern New Brunswick that it's good to know St. Andrews was special with everybody pitching in and then other communities would have helped us in our time of needs. So thank you. Thank you, Worship. Thank you. Um, some more to come on the finance. We still have to really weed out that process and make it for everybody, but um yeah, maybe your worship for the next meeting we'll put together our, our policy. I don't necessarily know if council has to approve it, but it might be good for us to put it forward and let you guys give us any advice and then we'll proceed after that meeting on the nineteenth to exactly. submit the forms or put the perhaps forms out. Perhaps there's a way the Red Cross can at least communicate to because they collected people's information. That might be a good way to communicate as well. All right. Uh thank you. Uh so we will uh transition. Let me just jump to the back here. Um under communication, I received a letter, um, and it is from the Association of Municipal Administrators of New Brunswick. It says the Association of Municipal Administrators of New Brunswick wishes to advise you that it is awarded Mr. Paul Nopper the Level Two Professional Certification in Local Government and Administration. Um, so, uh, just so everyone's aware, Level Two um, that is the uh, Intermediate Professional Certification Local Government Administration which actually demonstrates broad skills and knowledge in local governance. Uh, and uh, there is uh, quite a list of uh, 
criteria that is uh, needed and prerequisites in order to reach level two. So on behalf of the council of the town of St. Andrews, uh, Mr. Knopper, we just wanted to say congratulations and great work in furthering your career. Thank you, Our Worship and Council. I appreciate it. All right. And uh, so you'll notice under staff report, this is the meeting that we normally have a staff report. Um, but uh, we uh, made the decision when I was talking to Chris and Paul Tuesday that we would be fine delaying that for two weeks. Um, basically, in this council package, all you have before you is anything that was urgent or anything that didn't really require a staff report or it wasn't done. We just wanted to get this out to have the hearing of objections. Originally, I was moving to actually postpone it so they didn't have to even get the package out Wednesday, but they still want it to, to get it out. So thank you for them for that. So that's why there's nothing there. Um, so uh, under the introduction, consideration, passing of bylaws and motions, nothing under finance and admin. It's very rare, but it's happened a couple of times. Uh, public works, nothing. So we're right into uh, public safety with Councillor Neal. Thank you, Your Worship. <clears throat> this is PS230405. And the subject is bylaw number 23-02, a bylaw of the Town of St. Andrews respecting dangerous or unsightly premises, second and third reading. The background reads, with the recent changes from local governance reform, the Town of St. Andrews must review each bylaw and make revisions based on the new entity. Provided for the Council's consideration is bylaw number 23-02, a bylaw of the Town of St. Andrews respecting dangerous or unsightly premises. So the bylaw process, we had first reading April 17th, 2023, public hearing of objections and comments, May 15th, 2023, second reading and third and final reading. So there were no comments from the public hearing of objections, second and third reading of bylaw 23-02 can now be read by title based on the 14 day posting notification process. So the motion reads, that Council of the Town of St. Andrews grants leave for second reading to bylaw number 23-02, a bylaw respecting dangerous or unsightly premises in the Town of St. Andrews, and I so moved. Thank you. Could I have a seconder for that one? Got Deputy Mayor Akaji. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of going to second reading, please signify by saying aye. Aye. That's everybody. So here we go. This is the uh, bylaw number 23-02, a bylaw respecting dangerous or unsightly premises in the town of St. Andrews by title. One is definitions, uh, two is uh, title, three is reference to act, four is inspection, five is offenses and penalties relating to dangerous or unsightly premises, six is notice to owner or occupier, seven is evidence. Agents are sticking together. Eight is appeal, nine is registering a notice, 10 is offense and penalty for failure to comply with a notice. 11 is power to clean and repair or demolish. 12 is report required before demolition. 13 is emergency. 14 is offense and penalty for obstruction. 15 is recovery of town's cost, filing a certificate. 16 is lien. 17 is debts paid by the Minister of Finance and Treasury Board. 18 is uh, severability and 19 is appeal of previous bylaw. This was read the uh, second time on the fifth day of June, 2023. Next one. And the second motion is that the council of the town of St. Andrews grants leave for third and final reading to bylaw number 23-02, a bylaw respecting dangerous or unsightly premises in the town of St. Andrews and I so move. Once again, a seconder. I've got Councillor Heenan. Discussion. I don't think we'll have any on the third if we didn't have it on the second. Um, okay, all in favor of going to the third and final reading, please signify by saying aye. Aye. That's everybody. So here we go. This is a bylaw number 23-02, a bylaw respecting dangerous and unsightly premises in the town of St. Andrews. Once again, I'll read it by title. One is definitions, two is title, three is reference to act, four is inspections, five is offenses and penalties relating to dangerous or unsightly premise. Six is notice to owner or occupier. Seven is evidence. Eight is appeal. Nine is registering a notice. Ten is, I missed 10. Let me go back. 10 is a offense and penalty for failure to comply with a notice. 11 is power to clean and repair or demolish. 12 is report required at, before demolition. 13 is emergency. 14 is offense and penalty for obstruction. 15 is recovery of the town's cost, filing of certificate. 16 is lien. 17 is debts paid by the Minister of Finance and Treasury Board.
18 is severability and 19 is repeal of previous bylaw. And this was read now the third time on the fifth day of June, 2023. All right. Um, so the next one uh, again would be Councillor Neal. Thank you, Your Worship. This one is reference number PS230609, and the subject is fire protection on the wharf. The background reads, with the weight restrictions imposed on the wharf this spring, the fire department is unable to safely get a fire truck to the end of the wharf in the event of an emergency. We have investigated three options before you this evening, the first being a hard line installed underneath the wharf at a cost of $73,000, the second is a hard line installed on the wharf at a cost of $62,000. And the third is purchasing an additional 600 feet of hosing to be stored on a trailer for $14,100. With the upcoming wharf refurbishment, the hard line may have to be disassembled and reassembled, adding an additional cost. This is an emergency item, thus unbudgeted. Our recommendation is to purchase the 600 feet of hose then the fire chief, operations manager, and public works supervisor can determine the best place for the trailer to be stationed. So the motion reads that the council of the town of St. Andrews authorizes the unbudgeted purchase of $14,100 from Nova Fire Equipment for additional hosing to support the wharf in the event of a fire, and I so move, Your Worship. Thank you. A seconder? Got uh, Councillor Ware. Discussion on this one? Councillor Hurdle. Thank you, Your Worship. Just on the topic of fire protection for the wharf, um, with extended hot and dry conditions that we experience seemingly more and more each summer, um, as we know, it doesn't take much more than an errant cigarette toss to send wooden structures to a place of uh, that I don't like to think about. Um, my question, I guess, is, is, is there fire insurance on the wharf right now? Yes. Yes. And yeah. does, does the insurance require, um, what does the insurance require when it comes to hosing, piping, fire hydrants? I, it would require at least that you'd have the ability to, to fight the, the fire. And so not having any access to it wouldn't be, could be justif justified to not cover in the event of a fire. So by providing the service, and they have installed two, it's only a small line, but have it, and put a small hose, well, a long hose, but on a two inch line on the wharf. So let's say with that errant cigarette, there's something immediately available there that can at least start uh, to help put it out, but it's um, this won't be sufficient for the insurance company. So I recall, I think it was last summer, there was uh, some heroic efforts by someone with a fire extinguisher to put out something similar. Yeah, and there was, well, it's, like you said, I think an errant cigarette was what the determination was. And it's just those wooden piles that are sacrificial piles on the outside are old and dry and just landed the wrong way and caught fire and smoked and the fire department was fast but there's people coming over they remember the fire from the 90s and fire extinguishers and people throwing water on it and, and got it out fast but uh, there's still a lot of wood around there and uh, it wasn't an errant cigarette that caused the problem back in the 90s so we still have that potential of, of a serious incident on the wharf that could get out of control really fast so we're trying to minimize that at all cost thank you very much thank you any other member of council all right, I'll call the question then. All in favor of approving this motion, please signify by saying aye. Okay. That has been carried. Thank you, Councillor Neal. Uh, Councillor Hurdle, you're off light today as well. Um, Councillor Gumichel isn't here, but I thought that's where we would stick in a discussion on the weekly music in Market Square. I don't know if you wanted to kick that off, Mr. Spear, you want me to. It doesn't make any difference to me, whatever you prefer. Well, maybe I can start to explain the steps. So You go for it. As Council remembers we hired a, a recreation manager back over the winter and uh, one of the initiatives was that not only recreation but to add cultural events and so uh mr hansel pecker has taken over canada day and it's gonna uh, it's going well look quite similar to this past year with some added events just in order to, to you know to to, to to create some more opportunities for people in the community uh, one of the things we talked about early was a summer concert series in the square we tried to line it up against because some other communities have the same thing and one of the things is not to compete against St. Stephen or St. George because we're trying to draw people to our community and so uh, one of the nights that looked open was Saturday night and we worked in cooperation with one of our local businesses who would also hire them to some artists to come in after after hours you know to, 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 so to, to split the cost of some of these artists and so um 
three or four weeks ago, Mervyn went store to store or, or business to business around Market Square to let them know what they were thinking. And uh, one of the businesses said they didn't like it, but if they could stop the people in her could reduce the amount of time that the scare the that the parking wasn't allowed, they'd be okay with it. Then there's one business that was against it, and then two businesses that were for it. And so they were aware, and then uh, uh, um, we put out a letter last week announcing the, the specific dates we were going, and the plan is to put bar barricades up about 2 o'clock, 2.30 on the Saturday to try to restrict any more traffic coming in, so we're not going to pull people out of there, but we'll probably have signs that say, you know, no parking after 5 o'clock or something, have a little stage we're going to set up a stage for the summer in, in, in the square, just something small, mostly acts or two to three people tops. And then they'll be performing, I think seven to nine, what's six to eight, sorry, six to eight. And uh, then they'll be done for the evening and everything opened up. So uh, Mervyn put that letter out. He ordered it to you folks last week and then hand delivered it to some of the businesses around. But some of the owners still have concerns about the square being cut off from parking during that time, but they say they need it for their customers or for access for people with disabilities to their business. Um, so I will say that as, as part of the initiative, the Business Improvement Association St. Andrews donated $5,000 to it to help pay for the artists. So overall, the business community is enthusiastic, but it doesn't affect them directly as far as how it's going to, you know, on the parking issue. Although the hope of staff was that it would bring more people or keep people in town after a night of boating or going to Kingsbury Gardens or whatever and, and extend their stay and help the restaurants and things and just create more community feel. Uh, we looked at various venues. In our way of thinking, Market Square has always been a, a communal spot for, for the town. It is used for parking, but that's just because it's not always used for communal or community exercises our community cultural services. So we put it there and we would like to continue doing it there, but we do have some, which I've forwarded to you, various opposition to uh, the initiative that we've put out there. So we're just looking for direction from you if we should rethink this or or, or how we should address this any, any further. Thank you, Worship. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Spear. So council, obviously two sides to this one, uh, if you think about it. Um, one of the questions I heard is, when was this parking lot built? Well, the parking lot wasn't built. It was actually a community gathering spot. Uh, they they didn't put the cenotaph in the middle of a parking lot, right? They That was a place that's always been for the community to gather. You see it in a lot of downtowns. Uh, pretty much every historic downtown has a spot where people can gather. That's what that is. Um, you know, I've heard some language like, we're okay with Farmer's Market and Paddle Fest. Well, good, you should be, because they were there first, actually, Uh compared to anyone I've actually seen a complaint from. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, as far as the music, I heard it competes with businesses. Well, not everyone can afford to have a meal and enjoy music downtown. It's it's not uncommon to have music, to have a vibrant downtown. But with that being said, on the other side of it, we do have extremely limited parking downtown. Although it is later in the day, Saturday is probably the day that we have the most traffic uh, as is. Um, so uh, by shutting it down and kind of in the mid afternoon, it does remove some spots. And the other thing that I will say is that we do have a number of parks that are underutilized in our community. There, there's literally nothing that happens in a lot of them. Um, but with that, on the other side of it too, is the BIA is is probably the main financer behind the actual musical entertainment. If you move it to one of these parks, the BIA is not going to fund it because they fund things to improve the downtown. So council over to you um i'd love to hear your guys thoughts on this uh and uh i think our manager of recreation kind of got a little bit of a welcome to how some things might seem so simple in this community and they're a lot tougher so um i'll pass it over to you uh councillor heenan your worship in regards to the disabled parking i i don't feel that's warranted because right up on the water street there are two easily accessible spots one by the post uh, there's four uh Deputy Mayor Akadji says so. I don't. I don't think that that's really. Um, I mean, we haven't. We have enough disabled spots for that time frame. 
Um, so that doesn't pose a problem. I'm just wondering if we could say instead of 2.30 to 2, 2 to 2.30, taking it down, if there was any way of uh, stretching it to like three o'clock, like for takedown, like it, it really at three o'clock, it's everybody's shifting. Businesses are going, are closing some of them at four and five. And you also have people going back to the hotel to get ready for dinner, et cetera. So if it could be sh shoved back to three, I would see it as, as being a, a sort of a compromise. Anyway, right. thank you, Worship. Mr. Spear, your thoughts on three? It makes it a little tighter, obviously, but if you, I guess, have the signs up that clearly communicate it has to be out at three, it's at the person's parking's responsibility to make sure it's out of there, I guess. Yeah, and that's, Your Worship, and that's correct, is that we were willing to play with it either direction. We just had to pick a time to start it. And again, we were primarily saying that the place had to be vacated, you know, that we we're going to put a barricade across by the entrance to the square at 2.30 with, with signage in the square saying that all cars had to be gone by probably five o'clock in order to give up space and um, to, for those people to set up. We might even put up some um, pylons in order to allow the performers to get to get going but that was a plan and, and it worked out well we you know we would have extended it closer to when the actual start time it was just to play it by ear so people that brought chairs and stuff would have a place to sit and be able to watch the performance that's all so do you think 4 p.m would be a stretch even then i might be concerned about four i'd like to do three for a couple of weeks and seeing how it goes and then punch it so back to four respected. yeah okay fair enough uh okay so it sounds like three isn't a concern it's a good suggestion Councilor harlan how many parkings spaces are in the town square? Depends who's parking, but <laughs> 10 if it's done right. Correct. And so yeah. I don't remember, um, I should know this, but there's one that's actually designated disabled? There used to be three, yeah. but then we got, people said because of the slope, they weren't being used. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. So I don't know if there's any yeah, of them there anymore. There's, the majority there are nine parking accessible parking spots within a three block radius and five of them within uh King Street and behind Town Hall. Now the three that were there, I believe there still is at least one side, but it was commented that it is slippery, it is difficult to maneuver in that area, and that's why a lot of people prefer to park on the upper street and maneuver down the sidewalks. So okay. And when can I ask one more question? Absolutely. So, and when did we start parking in the square? When did we uh, start to allow that? It's gone on as long as I've been with the town, okay. you know, in and out. But if we ever had events, it always took priority. And I will say, but we're, we're sensitive to it. So over at Canada Day weekend, it's on the weekend this year. And so we have events on Saturday and Sunday, but on Sunday, we're moving them to on Sheriff Andrew's house in order to uh, ensure that the squares opened up on that day. So Canada Day, there'll be events in Market Square, but on the day after, on the second, we'll be moving events uh, over behind Town Hall so that the square can be open for the businesses there. So we are sensitive to try to minimize the impact, but we still think it's the ideal spot for power and stuff. It was set up for that as community space right. with the lighting and things, in and our opinion. My last one is, um, you say for the a summer concert series, but are we looking at like from July 1st until August 30th? Are we looking at eight Saturday nights? Yep. Okay. Thank you. Councilor Hurl. Thank you very much. Um, just regards to weather, um, is this a rain or shine event or is this just if it's the weather is cooperating? Well, it's a rain or shine, except the rain will be in, in our theater. We'll move it up to the W.C. O'Neill Theater. So it'll move out uh, of the yeah. parking lot and we wouldn't use the parking lot. No. So, I mean, knowing our summers, some, that may, may, we don't have any in the, in the square, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so I get my, my other question is, is just regarding the artists themselves. And maybe you might not be able to answer this question. This is more of a question for the BIA. Um, but they, like weather permitting, they're going to get paid regardless. Like they wouldn't lose. They, they get they get booked, scheduled and paid by the BIA. BIA and that's that's like a contract for them, is it? Yeah, well, and that's why we'd move it to the theater, because you're absolutely right. The summer is about the only time many of these artists can make their living because, right. you know, that's when they're the busiest. And so, you know, instead of um, giving up on the funding on a bad day or trying to build some type of awning, we just thought, you know, that the theater holds 125 people that we'd bring them up, up to the theater on a day that was unsuitable, was our plan, thought. 
Um, my last question is is because uh, there was a community stage that was set up behind Sheriff Andrew's house this uh, for during Paddlefest. Would that be considered in the BIA zone? Technically, no. The no. BIA is just on Water Street, just but I, I think they'd be okay with it. We you know with that for occasion, but it, uh, mm -hmm. it again it goes back to I think the space is still down on, on the front water, is still kind of the highlight of the area, and and there are a couple of although there's a couple of businesses that are opposed to it, there are a couple of businesses that are very enthusiastic about it. So to keep that in mind. Thank you, Councilor Ware. I'll just make a a comment on the concept. Uh, I think any community that I've been involved in that has done this is it has proved to be a tremendous success there were a few naysayers at the start and uh, I've seen it in Bathurst I've seen it in Fredericton I've seen it in Halifax St. Stephen 30 years ago uh, I think as a concept it, it's it's exactly where we should be going as far as the administration whether it's 2.30, 3 o'clock, 3.30. I think that's these gentlemen, that's what we're paying them for, to do the administration. It's up to us to either prove the concept or not. All right. Thank you, Councillor Ware. Deputy Mayor Agaji. Well, I'd like to thank uh, uh, Mr. Henselpecker for his initiative because it is um, a good idea to have it. And I think down in the town square or market square, which it's always been called Market Square, is um, it's excellent, you know, the to be down there. Well, Paddlefest is there, and it and a lot of people you know you've been there, and it's great. And I like to see music outdoors. It's uh, nice to see, and you meet all your friends, and you know. So I I think that's a good idea. Um, if they lose parking for a couple of hours, that's um, sad. Uh, but we have been respectful throughout the years. I mean. Canada Day for years as you know, we've bent over backwards and had, we've moved the market out then so that they could have the area. And uh, now because it's on a weekend and we're doing July 1st and 2nd, um, it's great to see that, you know, there will be, you know, more time to have people socializing downtown and maybe staying another night in St. Andrews, which was, is great for the economy. So I thank you, you guys for doing the effort to put it out there and for, his effort and BIA for taking the initiative. So thank you very much. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Anyone else? Councilor Neal. And just a quick question, I guess. So the stage is going to be set up, is going to be set up and taken down each Saturday? Or is uh, it going to be left there? We think we're going to leave it there, but it's eight, eight by 16. So it's two parking spalls equivalent. We could take them out. It's just, it's, and some, we're trying to find a more mobile way of doing it because it's about an all day job to set it up. Right. And so we'll play that out a little bit, but we talked about adding a into the budget of a more mobile stage, like on a trailer or something where it can be drop and go as opposed to what we currently have, which requires a lot of manpower and bolts and things like that to set it up. Okay. I guess my only other comment again, I had the same question maybe about the location of it, whether, you know, some of the unutilized parks might've been a better spot to try it out at least. Um, my first thought was again Sheriff Andrews House, where they did have some of the Paddle Fest events. Um, seems like a great unused space with you know, there's a fair amount of seating there already, I believe. Um, is there any opportunity to maybe even try it in a location if it's well attended? Have to move it around, or like again, I guess I can see both sides of it. I think it's a great initiative. Um, I love seeing the outdoor music downtown. But I can, like, I guess I am a little sympathetic to some of the businesses um, who, again, is storefront is right there in Market Square, whether it's restaurants or the whale watchers, whatnot. Um, again, they're there by choice, I guess. But at the same time, I think if we took away the storefront from any business on Water Street every Saturday, they would probably be fairly upset with us to begin with. So I kind of expected that reaction. Um so I guess I'm just trying to think of how we can best accommodate everybody, which again, I know is the impossible to make everyone happy. Um, but yeah, my thought with Sheriff Andrews House was, I don't know if it was worth exploring or if you guys thought about it. So we're seeking council's direction, to be honest. Again, a couple of the businesses with outside patios there, well, and there's a third one across the street that might be enthusiastic about it. So 
we're taking both both sides. Mm -hmm. I mean, and we're not we're not really taking away the storefront. We're maybe reducing their access a little bit, but I think you know a few dozen, maybe even a hundred people would be less intrusive in the square than people trying to manipulate through cars and stuff that are moving. So yes, people won't be able to park and walk right to the businesses as closely, but on the flip side, people coming from the street, I think would have easier access to those businesses than um, if there were cars all around and moving, in my humble opinion, anyway. Uh, second round here, this is good. Council Blanchard first. Sure, I'll jump in. Uh, thank you, Worship. I, I think I agree with, uh, with Mr. Spear. I don't think they're losing access. It might be a slightly reduced or access, but, uh, and we're, again, we're talking about uh, for a, a window, a small window on, on a Saturday, uh, once a week. I, there's obviously pros and cons to any new initiative, but I think the pros in this case far outweigh the negatives. Um, I, I think I go back to what uh, 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 Mr. Mayor, uh, uh, Mayor Henderson had said earlier, the, the, they didn't put the cenotaph in the, in the middle of a parking lot. So I, I do think of Market Square as a public area, and I think this is a a wonderful initiative and a good opportunity to make use of that during the summer, that space. It's a wonderful space. And I think we should have more public events there. So I'm, I'm hundred percent in favor of this. Thank you. Council Blanchard. Council Hurt. Yeah, just one final question, just because I, uh, the, the question's in the back of my mind and maybe you can add some clarification. The town doesn't actually own the access to that space either. Like it is, there's that access is private and can be taken away from us at any point. Am I wrong in that thinking that? partially we own half the access to it is a better way of putting it so we have one lane of access so that's protected that we will always have yeah. that okay thank yeah. you and part of the ex expanding market square with kind of shoring up the waterfront was to give us a larger access point but that being said for the neighboring businesses if we're going to invest in market square and make it bigger it's probably going to be used for more community events right like it's if we're not building a bigger parking lot when when i heard that plan we're we're building it to host more events right so Councilor Heenan. I also think that even the even the merchants or the businesses that are opposed could have a spinoff. Uh, because if people come down there, they may not access the business the night they're enjoying the music, but they may come back when they find out that it is there. And that that is a spin-off that there's no there's no tracking that, but it could be a possibility. So, and as I say, everyone, St. Stephen's already got their signs up advertising down, downtown to, uh, you know, their venues. So I think it's a good idea. I support it 100%, Your Worship. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So just a quick show of hands. If you support this initiative being in the Market Square, that's majority. So we're, we're good to go. Thanks, Council, for talking that one out uh, in length. Um, Speaking of talking in length, we're switching to planning and economic development. Councillor Heenan, I hope you have your glasses adjusted. To, you have some reading to do. <laughs> Thank you, Your Worship and Council. Well, the first one is PED 230417, Amendment to MP 20-07 to the Municipal Plan MP 20-01. Mr. Henry Hansen, PID uh, 0132505, second and third reading. The background is the Town of St. Andrews has received a request for an amendment to the Municipal Plan MP 20-01 from Mr. Henry Hansen to allow for a one-lot subdivision on PID number 01325505 Rose Lane. The next steps. Public presentation was done on Monday, April 17, 2023. First reading was April 17, 2023. Public hearings of objection was May 15, 2023. Obtain the views of the Planning Advisory Committee, May 17, 2023. Second reading, third reading. Please see the attached document for a copy of the PAC's comments. There were no objections or comments at the public hearing of objection. Council can now move to second and third reading. 
One of the actions is that Council of St. Andrews grants leave for the second reading of Amendment MP20-07 to the Town of St. Andrews Municipal Plan MP20-01 for Mr. Henry Hansen, PID 01325505, Rose Lane, to remove the portion of the residential growth area designation as shown on the generalized future land use map from PID 01325505. And I so move your worship. Thank you, seconder. We've got Councillor Blanchard winning that one. Uh, discussion? All in favor of this motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye, your worship. I'm off to second reading. And this is bylaw number MP20-07, a bylaw to amend bylaw number MP20-01, being a municipal plan bylaw for the town of St. Andrews. Being enacted by the council of the town of St. Andrews as follows. Number one, that the bylaw number MP20-01, the municipal plan bylaw for the town of St. Andrews, is amended by removing the portion of the residential growth area designation as shown on the generalized future land use map attached to the said bylaw schedule A thereof for the land shown on schedule one attached here too. This has been read the second time, the fifth day of June, 2023. Next motion. Thank you, Worship and Council. Next motion, that the Council of St. Andrews grants leave for the third and final reading of Amendment MP20-07 to the Town of St. Andrews Municipal Plan, MP20-01 for Henry Hansen, PID 01325505, Rose Lane, to remove the portion of the residential growth area designation as shown on the generalized future land use map from PID 01325505. I so move. Thank you, Seconder Deputy Mayor Akaji. Discussion? All in favor of going to third reading, please signify by saying aye. Aye, Your Worship. Here we go. Bylaw number MP20-07, a bylaw to amend the by um, to amend bylaw number MP20-01, being a municipal plan bylaw for the town of Sanders, be enacted by the council of the town of Sanders as follows. Number one, that bylaw number MP20-01, the municipal plan bylaw for the town of St. Andrews, is amended by removing the portion of the residential growth area designation as shown on the generalized future land use map attached to the said bylaw schedule A thereof for the lands shown on schedule one attached here to the third, the third time on the fifth day of June 2023. Next motion. Thank you, Worship and Council. Uh, the next reference number is PED 230615. Amendment Z22-04 to the Zoning Bylaw Z2201 for PID 01325240, Evans Land Development Limited. The Town of St. Andrews has received an application request for rezoning from the SR Service Residential Zone to MR2 High Density multiple residential zone to facilitate the development of an apartment complex slash subdivision. Please see the attached staff report from Southwest New Brunswick Service Commission for details. The steps in the process are public hearing of objections, obtain views of the PAC, first reading, second reading, third and final reading. The action is the motion that the Council of the Town of St. Andrews sets the date of Tuesday, July the 4th at two, uh, 2023 at 6.30 p.m. through a public hearing of objections as per Section 111 of the Community Planning Act on amendment of Z22-04 to the Zoning Bylaw Z22-01 for PID 01325240 Evans Land Development Limited, rezoning from the SR Service Residential Zone to MR2 High Density Multiple Residential Zone to facilitate the development of an apartment complex slash subdivision. I move this, Your Worship. Seconder. We've got Deputy Mayor Akaji again. Uh, any discussion on this one? Councilor Hurdle. Thank you, Worship. Uh, this question is for Mr. Gopin. Um, perhaps you can explain to me a little bit, because in my experience, um, these are necessarily, from the look of them anyway, which shows my lack of understanding, look like high density builds, more medium density in my mind, but um, high density for the area for sure. So I'm just quite curious around 
the zoning requirement itself, the high density, is that actually re required for these builds? And can you explain just a little bit more about that? Sure. Um, so it's really just semantics. It's really just the name of the zone. And I think it's to distinguish it from MR1, which is called the multiple residential zone. And then I think MR2 came after the fact later when uh, the Anchors Landing development was happening. And so to distinguish those two developments, that was called a high density residential zone. Um, I believe the developer wants to do a subdivision. So there's no... Um, there's no requirement of a certain level of density as long as the use is an apartment building or things that are higher density than a single family dwelling. And this certainly meets that and it meets the other zone standards with maybe one or two little small dimensional variances that may be required. Thank you. Any other questions? Council Blanchard. Just uh, on the uh, land for public pur uh, purposes, the 8%, which is what's required. Uh, I know we have done in the past the cash in lieu of that, but I think this council has discussed before a need for more green spaces and to try and get away from that uh, cash in lieu. Is there space? Uh, I know there's a small section there shown in the in the uh, in the uh, uh, in the in the diagram that we have there, but is there space to do that? I think there would be. Um... I mean, there's there's some amenity space for residents that's required that would not be necessarily land for public purposes. Um, but I, you know, I think the developer they weren't able to come on such short notice tonight. But I think it's something they did want to discuss with council, and I believe they will be here on June nineteenth to talk about that and other matters. So I think. Um, my guess is they could fit it on the site. Um, they might not feel like it's the most desirable use of the land for what they want to do. Um, but, you know, certainly if they change the number of units, this the parking as it's laid out now would be the maximum build out. So if they lowered that just a little bit, um, then they would have more space for other things. So I, I think it's totally possible. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. All in favor of setting this for the public hearing objections, please signify by saying aye. Aye, Your Worship. That has been set. Next motion. Thank you, Your Worship and Council. Next motion, that the Council of St. Andrews requests the views of the Planning Advisory Committee for the Town of St. Andrews as per Section 110 of the Community Planning Act on Amendment Z22-04 to the Zoning Bylaw Z22-01 for PID 01325240 Evans Land Development Limited, rezoning from the SR Service residential zone to MR2 high density multiple residential zone to facilitate the development of an apartment complex slash subdivision. I so move. Thank you. Seconder. Councillor Harlan won that one. Um, discussion. Okay. All in favor of sending this over to the PAC, please signify by saying aye. Aye, Your Worship. Any opposed? That's everybody. So that has been carried. Next motion. Okay, our next reference number is PED 230616, Amendment Z22-05 to the Zoning Bylaw Z22-01 for PID 01323591 for Dominique Belanger and Micaia Elisa Van de Kel. That close? <laughs> How about Mr. and Mrs.? <laughs> the town of St. Andrews has received a zoning, uh, has received a rezoning application and several text amendments to the SR serviced residential zone to MR1 multiple residential zone to facilitate the development of a rooming house primarily for students. Please see attached staff report from the Southwest New Brunswick Service Commission for details. Steps. Public hearing of objections, obtain views of the PAC, first reading, second reading, third and final reading. And one of the action is the motion that the council 
of the town of St. Andrews sets the date of Tuesday, July the 4th, 2023 at 6.45 p.m. through a public hearing of objections as per Section 111 of the Community Planning Act on Amendment Z22-05 to the Zoning Bylaw for PID 01323591 for Mr. and Mrs. Belanger for Tech Amendment and Rezoning for the from the SR Serviced Residential Zone to MR one multiple residential zone to facilitate the development of a rooming house primarily for students. I so move this, Your Worship. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Act Chiefs. Quick again, um, we did hear from the applicant earlier. Is there uh, any questions or any comments at this point? Okay, all. Hey, okay. Yep. Sorry, I just actually it's something I didn't notice until now. But back to the planner was the phrase "primarily for students" problematic if. You know, they might have young adults that aren't going anywhere that still meets the criteria, but it's just seems like one it should be part of the motion. Uh, I mean, in my it's it's in my report as kind of just this is, was my understanding at the time. Um, it's not part of the bylaw or any of the amendments. There's no references to students specifically. Can, can we drop that as a friendly amendment? It doesn't really matter. It's for the setting. It's. It's really when we go to the readings that matter, right? Okay, it doesn't affect anything. Okay, um, so we got a mover, seconder. Uh, call the question. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye, Your Worship. That's been carried. The next one. Thank you, Worship and Council. That the Council of the Town of St. Andrews requests the views of the Planning Advisory Committee for the Town of St. Andrews as per Section 110 of the Community Planning Act on Amendment Z22-05 to the Zoning Bylaw Z22-01 for PID 01323591 for Mr. and Mrs. Belanger for the text amendment and rezoning from the SR Service Residential Zone to the MR1 Multiple Residential Zone to facilitate the development of a rooming house primarily for students. I so move it, Your Worship. Seconder. Got Councillor Neal of that one. Um, discussion. Okay. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. That has been carried. We are through the motions this evening. There is nothing under new business, which brings us into question period. Um, oh, Mr. Spear. Yeah. Sorry, Your Worship. I just want to follow up just to let council know of something that kind of, we've gone through a lot of development motions here that kind of affect the same area of town as well as some new stuff. I will say one of the items that keeps coming up is about doing a traffic study. And I get a quote today on doing a traffic study that's actually reasonable, may go under my, my own budget. But if it doesn't, I'll certainly bring it up on the 19th. So for any residents that are concerned about that element of it, the mayor and council has heard you and we're addressing that by hiring a firm to do a study to give us some um, advice and whether or not with the proposed development over the next several years, if if the current infrastructure can handle that as far as road. Uh, I'm glad you brought that up. I actually do think that there's a number of developments in this area that if we have the resources, we should do it. It just, for, for people that are in the area that have concerns, it certainly would address a lot of them when it comes to traffic flow, for sure. Does anyone oppose that? I, I, don't, I know you don't have the quote before us, but if you say it can work within your budget, then I think that that's something we should definitely do uh, as that is a lot of development in one area. Just a quick question. When we when we do a traffic study, um, do we have to give, a, I guess, a mission statement or a purpose before they start, or can they can they come up with their own? I'll forward the proposal to council, and if you want to give me feedback that you want to discuss <laughs> it even further, we can. That's a very safe answer. Uh, <laughs> All right. Yes. Thank you for adding that in, Mr. Spear. So uh, question period. Uh, I guess we'll start by seeing if anyone's online. Well, you can ask. No one's online. Perfect. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to ask any questions this evening on anything pertaining to the budget or to the agenda? <laughs> I am working on budgets at Kingsbury in case anyone's wondering. <laughs> um, okay. Seeing none. Uh, so we are into Councillor and Deputy Mayor's comments. Any member of Councillor Deputy Mayor have anything they'd like to uh, to say? Councilor Harlan. Um, thank you. So um, this past week, we've seen, uh, uh, as we've talked about already tonight, um, a tremendous connectedness within our community. Um, we live in a very special community that has 
shown the um, so shown significant support to um, uh, our residents in Shamcook and Bocabec and to our first responders. And that's fantastic. Um, June is also uh, Pride Month. And um, my hope is that as a community, we will also take this, this time to reflect on how we can become an even more inclusive, safe community for all members of our community. So I would just encourage everybody to uh, think about um, June, what, what June it represents and um, our Pride Month. And I know Councillor Heenan is, has an announcement as well regarding Pride. Thank you very much, Councillor Harlan. And we'll switch to Councillor Heenan on that note. In following suit, um, Ms. Vicki and uh, has asked me to announce that the Charlotte County Pride Walk will be June the 17th at 11 a.m. We're hoping that everyone will uh, attend as possible to the walk and it's meeting outside here at the W. O'Neill Arena. And that is correct. And just an FYI, uh, the boat cruise was, uh, was canceled for Friday evening. So if you happen to have tickets, uh, I believe you can get your money refunded at the point of sale. Anyway, thank you, Your Worship. Thank you very much. And Deputy Mayor Akji. Thank you, Your Worship and Council. Um, uh, I guess the first thing I want to say is that NBCC graduation will be June 9th, which is this Friday. So I hope that um, as many people will go to the graduation. Um, I forgot to write down the time because I'm gonna be there um, on the land recognition and, and also on behalf of council and represented. And then National Indigenous Day is June 21st. Uh, and in Market Square, the um, Beskatomagadi people are hosting a uh, activities from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. And that's, it's a Wednesday, but it'll be all day in Market Square. And there will be food, activities, drumming, um, uh, whatever they they will provide. So if you want more information about it, I would uh, suggest you call the tribal office uh, with the chief, but it will be from nine to 12. So and everybody's welcome. It was a, um, a good one last year and I hope it'll be just as well attended this year. The third thing is the drum workshop, which I keep trying to have because I have so many people calling me We've decided to host it on Sunday, July the 2nd, as part of Canada Day activities. Um, I have two elders coming, uh, one, uh, actually I have three. I have um, a, um, an elder, uh, my friend that's uh, Constance Sewell. Uh, she's coming from Pabano First Nations and um, Greg, oh, what's his, his last name? I forgot it. It's gone. And anyway, he is coming with his wife and they're um, going to be doing the workshop on Sunday. Now I've called everybody. I've left messages um, and um, we had the funding from the government, but uh, we lost that um, when the, the budget went in March or whatever. Uh, although I tried to get have another workshop in February. So we've decided to do it Sunday, July the 2nd. It's going to cost $60 per person. And um, as I say, I've got uh, space, may have spaces because I'm waiting for people to call me back. You have until I've decided July this, uh, June the 16th, which is Friday, um, oh, two weeks from today, to send me the money um, if you want it to have a spot in the workshop. For those people I've left messages, I wish you would call me back and tell me whether or not you're going to take that spot because after the um, 16th, I'm going to open it up to the long list of people that I have. But I also have another list that's starting from people who are calling me again to say if you do have some cancellations, they would like to do it. So um, my number to be called at and leave a message is 506-529-3331. Um, so, and the other thing that we will be doing in, um, along with Canada Day celebrations is that at four o'clock on the 2nd of July, uh, we will be doing ceremony and um, a blessing of all the drums. So I'm asking the people that did the workshop in November um, 
to bring their drums and that we'll have them all blessed on that day. Um, and there'll, the class will be from nine to 12 and then there'll be one to four. And at 4 p.m. there will be a blessing for all the drums that were made that did it that day and in November. And then I'd like to see you bring them September 30th to our uh, 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 Truth and Reconciliation Day because it would be nice to have those 75 drums walking around the point and making noise, even though we'll disturb the mayor. Um, so, oh, I didn't give you my email if you want to transfer me the money, but please first register and then um, I can tell you whether or not you're on you're on the list. So I've, if I've left you a message, call me back, um, email me uh, an e-transfer, which is my last name, A-K-A-G-I, Kate, K-A-T-E, that's all one word, at gmail.com. And again, that's before June the 16th. So that's that. Um, and uh, one thing that the mayor asked me to attend was the 16th annual ceremonial review of the cadets, our cadets, on Wednesday, May 17th. And I did that, and a few counselors were there as well. Um, as our CAO was there. And I thank you all for participating because we need to support our young cadets. Uh, there's quite a few of them. Uh, they um, performed spectacularly. They marched well. Um, I got to speak to a lot of them and uh, their parents. I found out my great niece is a cadet, which threw me for a loop because I didn't know. But her grandfather would be very pleased because he was in... Um, at Gagetown, so he was in the, the armed forces. So it's kind of nice to see that the grandchildren are going on. Um, there was a reviewing officer, Major uh, S. Laporte, and he he spoke very well and very highly of, of the area. But I'd, I'd like to thank um, their commanding officer, Aaron Bennett, and the, his, the people that worked with him. The, they did a fantastic job that evening. Um, it went very very well and um as again i was just impressed so i thank them very much for the invite and i thank you for allowing me to represent you um and council and so it was a good evening so and i would like to reiterate thanks to everybody who helped out with this fire it was fantastic i came up a couple of times and was sent home because there were so many volunteers but i did bring food drop it off but um, it was wonderful to see, and and uh, our fire department is A number one, so I thank you guys very much. I mean, I know the fire uh, near the point, you guys saved my house, so I'm very thankful for what you do, and it's mostly volunteers. So again, and thank you guys and the staff, because you do so much for um, our community as well, and CHCO TV for covering. So thank you very much. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, anyone else? Councilor Ware. Uh, the uh, Kelly Cove smolt facility has put in their environmental protection plan for phase two. You may recollect at the end of March, they had phase one. Phase one was the removal of the greenery, the trees. Phase two was everything else. So. It's a fairly large phase. Uh, members of the committee have until June 12th to get their comments in. Uh, a lot of paper to go through, but uh, I think we're going to make it through it. And uh, I will be meeting with the people on the west side of Shamcook Lake between now and the 12th. They are extremely concerned about it and wonder what the drawdown is on all the wells and that type of thing. Uh, there's main, one main well that does the drawdown of water with three fallback wells. Then there's a fourth well. I know where it is because I four wheel by all the time, but uh, that's the observation well where they will monitor the the water, the groundwater level or the aquifer. So I haven't told the 12th of June to get it in. If anybody has any concerns, questions, whatever, I will attempt to answer them. But uh, as you can appreciate this four or five consulting firms involved, it's uh, quite
quite a volume of paper. So thank you very much, Councilor. Okay, Deputy Mayor Akaji. Thank you, Your Worship and Council. Um, I want to thank the Legion for um, the banners that will be put up in November. We've been a community that hasn't had these banners, and I'd like to thank staff for working um, towards getting the rest of the banners and that uh, the end the deadline was the end of May. And I uh, unofficially have heard that they have sold a lot of the banners. Um, so it's been a, a great thing and I'm looking forward to seeing them uh, in November. I'd like to thank especially Sue Coombs and Inez Thomas Cooley for their work and and uh, organizing this. So thank you very much. And I'm sorry I was a little slow with that. That's okay. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Anyone else? All right. Thank you, Council. So uh, myself, I spoke earlier, so I'll uh, spare you again. But uh, at 8.14 p.m., I'll move that council goes into, or I'll look for a mover to that council goes into closed session as per local governance act section 681C information that could cause financial loss or gain to a person or the local government or could jeopardize negotiations leading to an agreement or contract. Mover, please. Okay, Councilor Neal and second of a Councilor Blanchard. All in favor of going to closed session. We are going to closed session. Thank you everyone for attending this evening. <laughs>